days are cooler, nights are warmer, and I put the blame on you. Time moves slow, but my heart beats faster. When these eyes are looking right at you, right at you, you give me something to believe in, just what I need it. Uh, we're having an, an interesting conversation today, and I'm glad so many of you want to join in. It's proven what I believe. I think a lot of us believe things. I think a lot of us believe in good and evil. I think a lot of us um, don't necessarily take uh, control over it in our lives. So today I want you to really lean into it because there's a lot of misinformation, which I think is evil because it's on purpose, it's willful. It wants you to to go a certain direction. It wants you to um, not vote. It wants you to, the evil wants you to, um, you know, believe in the worst things possible about human beings. Whether it's uh, yesterday on Eastern Parkway, they had the West Indian Day Parade where a million people show up and a gunman showed up and shot, I think, four people. And then that becomes like the story. That becomes a story. There was a shooting in Chicago. Chicago's bad. But we never hear about what's going on in Alaska, which is more dangerous than Chicago and Eastern Parkway. If you imagine a million people and there's one incident, in, well, two, because it was also a stabbing, but there's a million people in one place. I would like to see what the stats are in another place that may have a million population, people population, and how much crime and, and violence happened there. But we don't report on that. The media is corrupt, in my opinion, because it, it, it feeds to the worst instincts in people. So this weekend, uh, trending was Ice Cube. Ice Cube was trending. And if you notice, I didn't get involved in that. Those of you who follow me on Twitter, I didn't retweet. I didn't get involved in any of the commentary because, first of all, in my mind, I was like, oh, if Ice Cube is saying something again about this election cycle, I, I've already dismissed him as not being a serious person. So why am I engaging in the algorithm? So I just ignored it. But come to find out, this clip, play it, Smith, that was circulating. You don't vote just to vote. You vote because you're getting something or your community is getting something. So everybody that's telling you that, man, look at them and say, What's it, what are you getting? Because people that just want you to vote and not ask for nothing, people that's in power that want you to vote but don't want you to get anything or not asking for you to get anything economically, they suspect straight up. Because a lot of people been in place for a long time and we ain't got shit. That shit gonna end. That shit gonna end. We gonna get what we supposed to get. Period. And anybody asking you not to ask, I wouldn't listen to them. Because okay. that's the process. Every... All right. So... I didn't click on the video. I just saw Ice Cube was trending and I saw the video and never clicked on it. But had I clicked on it, I'm like, oh, this sounds familiar. Because four years ago, this was the video. And if y'all remember four years ago, he got his ass handed to him. So he's not really even been saying much politically this time around. And what, what I did see people like, why don't we ever hear people tell white people to stay home? And I was like, I did, I think I commented on that. I was like, right? We never hear a campaign telling white people to hold it, will hold their vote. And then somebody's like, well, they have all of the power. And I was like, actually, the poorest people in this country are white. The poorest counties in this country are white. They actually don't have all of the power. They vote against their interest in their power, but they show up. They show up. They vote. And nobody ever tells them to stay home. So that part is right. And even listening to Ice Cube, if this were done, say, uh, January of 2021, I would I would give him kudos because, of course, you know, that's the time during primary season, during the midterm season, where you send messages, right? This is when you send messages. You don't wait until 90 days, 70 days to election day to do that. Anybody doing that, they are purposefully, willfully trying to, to keep people home. And then I have to ask, for what purpose? Because you're rich. 
But this is not even about Ice Cube. In fact, his son, O'Shea Jackson Jr., tweeted, here I am thinking my dad said something new, and y'all talking about a video from four years ago, all caps. Why does Ice Cube only come around during election years? You're looking at a video from four years ago. Four exclamation points. He said, I can't believe this. But who was who was sending this out? Who sent this out? Who circulated this and why? Why was this circulating? And you have to ask yourself, why was this circulating? 866-801-8255. Then trending this week, weekend, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods was trending because Vice President Kamala Harris and Vice and President uh, Biden were together in Pittsburgh. And then Vice President Harris yesterday talked with the uh, was at a rally with union members. And uh, there's videos going around with her changing up in Michigan, her speech patterns in Detroit versus Pittsburgh. And folk were like, oh, my God, she's pandering. She's being Hillary Clinton. No, she's being black in America where at any point in time when you're in front of different audiences, you will you will change up. If you're at the workplace, you talk differently than you do at home. And it's a phenomenon that it's a privilege if you are unmelanated and you don't have to do that. But some of y'all do it, too. You talk differently at home than you do at work. It's 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 yes, it's cold switching. And if you're before different audiences, if you're in a church, you're going to talk. Yes, people do that. I don't do it because <laughs> I don't have to. And I probably, you know, uh, if I, in my 20s, I think I did definitely code switch. I wouldn't have been hired at the Daily News if I didn't. <laughs> I code, but that didn't last long. I think by the, by age 23, I was like, I'm over this. This is who I am. This is I'm going to talk. This is I'm going to talk this way. Um, but, you know, there's a time and a place for everything. And so, you know, black people have the license to code switch. And whether she's black or not, in your opinion, it doesn't matter. She's lived her black life all her black life. And so this is what she does. Okay. And so um, that was, you know, sending people in a tizzy because they're looking for anything. This is how you know they also don't have anything. This is this is what y'all focusing on. Okay. This is terrible. It's terrible. Okay. So what was hilarious about that is there was a trending topic around Tiger Woods. And people were saying that Tiger Woods went out and he called her fake. And he was criticizing Kamala. This was this was trending. I saw it. I didn't click on it. I didn't share it because I was like, Tiger was in, in my mind. I was like, the Kabla Nation dude who was tied to a tree by white people whose daddy and he experienced racism. And there's some complications with Tiger Woods that people don't never they never talk about. And I'm I'm not going to talk about it today, but there's some complications there. His relationship to white people. Well, I'm gonna say less, but I was like, that was an odd thing for Tiger Woods to say. It just it struck me as odd, but I didn't engage with it because again, I'm on mission, full steam ahead. I ain't entertaining and engaging in nothing that is not taking us from point A to point B. I ain't got the time unless it's Fridays when I'm I got all the time. But today, no, I didn't have the time this weekend, so I ignored it. And come to find out, I'm so glad I didn't touch it. Because the story, the viral quote, was all a lie. The quote appears to have come from a satirical account on Twitter called Tour Golf, known for posting humorous and mostly false statements about public figures. This account has dubbed itself similar to the parody websites like the Babylon Bee and the Onion, which we're very familiar with. It was parody. The fake quote gained significant traction on social media, racking up millions of views and thousands of likes, millions of views and thousands of likes. And I saw some of y'all commenting on it. Tiger Woods did not say this. He's somewhere minding his happy black business. One drop rule. Look it up. So this led to mistakenly uh, being believed that it was genuine. However, the account that posted the quote clearly stated in this bio that it is satirical. Maybe people don't know what satire means, that they don't, they're too lazy to Google search the word. And it, or, or evil people decided to see what would happen if they shared it widely. Hmm. Why? Why would they do that? Why would they post something with Tiger Woods, a very beloved figure, very complicated, mercurial figure, saying something negative about Kamala Harris? Why would they do that? Hmm. Hmm. 866-801-8255. So then uh, these clips went out, and I I want to um, 
Mm -hmm. I rarely would do this because we only had one morning Joe here on Urban View, and that was Joe Joe Madison. But on Morning Joe, a guy named Jeffrey Goldberg, who was making the rounds, they were talking about the media and why these things are happening. So I'm going to play this clip, Smith's clip three. Jeff, um, you made the point to your guests that Donald Trump will be brutish at Arlington, uh, going places that no other politician has gone. He will have bizarre tweets daily that suggest he's deeply unwell. He will flip flop on issues like abortion and immigration and, ju and just about everything else, uh, lie constantly. And yet the media will pretend like this is 1996 and it's Clinton Dole and they go, yes, but Kamala Harris had Tim Waltz with her in her first interview. And this is, I, I, I noticed the pace of, and I hate criticizing the mainstream media because mainly they do things right, but they there don't. is almost a desperation for them to pretend this race is like every other race. And the false moral equivalency is getting pretty bad. And we're, we're, we're just one day past Labor Day. Talk about that, if you will. Yeah, no, I mean, this really struck me. I mean, it should have struck all of us about nine years ago, right? But it really struck me when he did his long soliloquy on batteries, electric, electricity and sharks. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Whether to be, whether it's better to be killed by a shark or by a battery falling into the ocean. And then, you know, last week it was this, uh, another sort of incredible disquisition about irrelevant things. And I was listening to these and I'm thinking, my God, if Kamala Harris spent 10 minutes on stage randomly talking about whether, first of all, he doesn't even understand how batteries work and how stored energy works. And if he's, he spent last week talking about how people don't eat bacon anymore because of windmills, mm. um, that's not he's right. normal. I mean, that, that's, it's not, it's not normal and we can't act as if it's normal. And so we're operating with a double standard. Kamala Harris, we parse her speeches, her interviews, uh, as if she's a serious human being who is taking slightly different positions on X or Y or Z and we're holding her accountable and that's fine and especially fine in a normal circumstance. But here we have a situation where she's talking about, uh, She's talking about things within a normal bandwidth of political discussion, and he's saying uh, abnormal things, and we're treating them the same. And and there's two different races going on, and there's two very different kind of candidates. And I'm just saying, well, let's just let's just say what it is, which is which is this this person is outside the the bandwidth of of what politicians have been like through our modern era. Yes. So it begs the question. The number here is 866-801-8255. No matter what your politics, whether you are a Democrat or a Republican, whether you uh, uphold Democratic ideals or Republican ideals, you have to, if you're a sentient being, see that there is a difference in the way that this race is being handled by both the corporate media and social media. The fact that Ice Cube was a trending topic, that Tiger Woods was a trending topic, two things that were not relevant or pertinent to this election cycle, one an outright satirical lie, and I'm, I'm putting up air quotes around satire because the headline and everything was so, it wasn't believable though. If you like, just, just question it, why would Tiger Woods say this? And it was spreading. And I was like, wow. You got a whole video of Uncle Luke, who is now an acolyte of Kamala Harris. He is now so sold out that he was cussing out Tiger Woods. You're going to have to apologize to him, sir, which is why you don't make these videos. You don't make comments until you verify that the thing is true. Because you excoriated him, called him the N-word, all the kinds of stuff, and couldn't even pronounce Kablanasia. You look really silly. Maybe you should be saying less, Uncle Luke. I'm pr appreciative that you are on board after being somebody that was problematic. But don't be like a smoker that just quit smoking, and now you out there cutting everybody's cigarettes up. You were smoking yesterday, okay? You might have a touch of the Zima, okay? And now you out here crusading wildly and don't know what you're talking about most of the time still still don't know what you're talking about so I, I i actually have a problem with whether you're on my side or not if you are not 
in alignment with the truth, I don't really mess with you. Whether you are saying the things, some of the things, I'm not parsing through. <laughs> Get it right or shh, 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 be quiet. <sighs> okay, so that happened. Eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. I'm putting out the number because I'm curious. Um, the people who still support Donald Trump, if you're listening, I would like to get your and come with receipts and facts. I want I want chapter and verse. I want to know like what are the policies? What are the policies? Because here's the other thing that was trending, leading up to the, ever since Kamala Harris was announced that she said she's not doing anything for black people. That was trending. That's been trending. I've seen it in my YouTube comments. I'm never voting for her. She said she's not doing anything for black people. She's not doing anything for black people. I heard it out of her mouth. And what they've done is taken a clip, 10 seconds from a two-minute clip, and posted that widely with headlines and things that Kamala Harris said she's not doing anything for black people. So I thought I would do a public service today and play the whole clip. For anybody, and this is for anybody out there. If you got people in your life that say, "Oh, I mean, we can't, we can't vote for Kamala Harris. She hasn't done anything for black people," and your response is, "What has Trump done? He's a racist." Blah blah blah. That shouldn't even be the case. You should want people be in your conviction, but your conviction should be rooted in something factual. Your conviction around her should be truthful, and that's not truthful. So this is from five years ago, by the way. <laughs> this like Ice Cube's video four years ago. There seems to be a trend. I'm going to get into that today. Tech Tuesday, China's doing some things y'all need to know about. But we need to be vigilant in our social media behavior, how we engage, what we share, what we allow to be shared. If somebody shares something on your timeline, is it Facebook, if it's Twitter, threads, whatever, you let them know this is a lie or this is old. I'll do that constantly. This is old. This is from four years ago. Why are you posting? And then I'll ask, why are you posting something that's four years old? What is your point? What is your purpose? Who are you? And I always go to this. Who are you voting for? Are you voting? There, there was some some comedian. I think is what's his name. Um, he's small, short guy, um, little something. Uh, was was out there talking crazy, and I think Goldie <laughs> Goldie found out that he um, hasn't voted ever. <laughs> it's like. Because you can check people's voter, because uh, I had to check my registration again just to make sure before I filled out this mail-in ballot uh, that I was actually ready because I don't want any problems, right? So um, I want to be counted. Uh, but you could check if you have people's name and their address, whether or not they are registered to vote. And she was like, you're not even registered to vote. Shut up. Out here talking about this election cycle. You ain't even vote. Um, but this is a five-year-old clip from the Grio, actually. Um, somebody that we had on the show recently was interviewing Kamala Harris in this clip. Um, Smith and I, her, oh, uh, she was uh, Natasha. Ah, I see her face in my head. She was on the re recently and on Reese's show. Um, she she wrote a book about being la Latina and black. Ah, Smith. All right, find the name. Yes, Natasha S. Alford. Smith is amazing. Appreciate you, but I see her even if I didn't make all of the dots connected. It's not because of any reason. But anyway, play the clips, Smith. Do you support reparations for black people? Well, listen, again, we had over 200 years of slavery. We had Jim Crow for almost a, a, a century. We had legalized discrimination, segregation, and now we have it, it, segregation and discrimination that is not legal but still exists and is a barrier to progress. We have disparities around housing. We have disparities around education. We have disparities around income. And we have to recognize that everybody did not start out on an equal footing in this country. And in particular, black people have not. And so we have got to recognize that and do something about that and give folks a lift up. That's why, for example, I'm proposing the LIFT Act. Give people who are making $100,000 or less as a family a tax credit, which will benefit and uplift 60% of black families who are in poverty. So by default, it affects black families, but there's not a particular policy for African Americans that you would explore. But no, if you look at the, the reality of who will benefit from certain policies, 
when you take into account that they're not starting at at, at the same place and they're not stand, they're not starting on equal footing it will directly benefit black children black families black homeowners because the disparities are so significant so if we focus on the specific issues that have resulted in the greatest disparities and we understand that that's part of why we're doing it listen the, the reality also is this any policy that will benefit black people will benefit all of society let's be clear about that let's really be clear about that so i'm not gonna sit here and say i'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people no because whatever benefits that black family will benefit that community and society as a whole in the country right mm. and they only focused on i'm not going to do anything that just benefits black people you've heard that clip right you've heard that it's circulated widely the question is why didn't they play the rest of this this lift up tax credit that would benefit 60 percent of black families the disparity she broke down the history she knows what and she's a prosecutor she's a legal mind so she knows if she says uh, out of her mouth, I'm just going to do X, Y, and Z, it will get held up in court. Hell, they sued over the black farmers. Are y'all paying attention? The black farmers who have been historically discriminated against, the Biden-Harris administration tried to make it right, and Trump Supreme Court was like, no, white, white farmers mad, filed a discrimination lawsuit, and, and that money got held up until very recently. They done sued the fearless fund. <laughs> they, they don't. So you think she's smart enough to put policies together? She said that. <laughs> she said, yes. And the truth of the matter is, if we do things that help black people, it will help everybody. But let's know why we're doing these things. Hint, 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 hint. Y'all are really, really either obtuse or evil. Don't know which one yet. Don't know which one. My days are cooler. Nights are warmer. And I put the blame on you. Time moves slow. But my heart beats faster. When these eyes are looking right at you. Right at you. You give me something to believe in. Just what I need. Close.